Okay, welcome to day number one of vlogging almost every day until, well, I'm not really sure. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that I have two very specific reasons for doing this. They are very specific and I will tell you what they are right now. Number one, I need the content. Uh, YouTube is going to throttle all of my videos until I show them that I can make content on a consistent basis. And number two is that ever since I was a boy, just a tender aged middle schooler, I told myself I would have a YouTube channel. I would have something that people could watch and, and would come to enjoy. And I do, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel, but it's not exactly the big thriving community that I told myself it would be when I was a kid. So that brings me to my first of two issues with this whole vlogging everyday thing. Number one, I have no self-discipline. I am terrible at sticking to any kind of schedule, especially a content schedule, and even more especially when it's content for myself. Doing something for somebody else, no problem. I, I can post stuff every week. I can get in there and shoot documentaries for you. I can travel across the world, no big deal. For me, nothing. If you were to take a look at all the content that was on this channel before I took it down, you would see posts that were three, six, nine, even a year's worth of time apart. It's not nearly enough consistency for YouTube to say, hey, this channel's relevant and this guy's worth watching here, let me recommend him to you. I know that that's the problem. Why does that even matter though? Why do I care about getting recommended? It's because I have these big ideas, these things that I think are important and that I think people would like to see, but I know that they never will because of my own laziness. And that brings us to the second issue. Number one is the fact that I'm horribly inconsistent and lazy. And number two is that, well, it's this. It's what we're doing right here. This talking head stuff is so boring. It's boring for you to watch, it's boring for me to make. And if I'm gonna make a vlog every day, if we're being honest, it would be the easiest thing to do. But I just don't think it's important or impressive enough. I mean, sure, we could sit down and talk about some deeply philosophical ideas and it might be enriching to a few people who can actually sit through it, but I know that most of the population has the attention span of a goldfish, myself included. So how do we fix this? How do we come up with something that is both interesting and piques your curiosity and can be put out quickly and efficiently every single day, but also doesn't involve me just sitting here talking at you for however long? I'm not totally sure, but I think we can try to figure something out. My thoughts when I sat down to design this series of vlogs were that I wanted to create something that didn't bore me to make and didn't bore you to watch. I was sitting there racking my brain trying to figure out what would be interesting, what hasn't been done, and then it kind of hit me. What if I made vlogs in a series, not just standalone vlogs, but something that had a continuing storyline? Sorry, the sirens are going crazy out there. I wonder what's happening. Something that had some, some intrigue, some, some curiosity to it, something that created anticipation. Because curiosity and anticipation are the antithesis of boredom, and that's exactly what I'm hoping to create. So how do you go about creating curiosity and anticipation in a daily vlog? I don't know, if I were to pick up my camera right now and turn it around and show you that we're up really high, and then I were to lean it over and just cut. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. If I just cut, right? You would feel slighted. You would feel jilted. You would think there's something missing. You led me up to this high place and you peer over the edge and you're expecting something to happen. That's the anticipation. And you're wondering what's going to come next. That's the curiosity. Or in other words, it's suspense. You can build suspense in a lot of ways. Take a look at the shot of this abandoned building that I got, and I'm gonna add some context clues to make you feel that curiosity and that anticipation and really, really sink in the suspense.
Okay, so I get that that was a seemingly abandoned place and I added music and sound effects to make it feel more suspenseful, but how do you bring that to something like a daily vlog? How do you add that kind of drama, that kind of interest to something like this? In my mind, there's one tactic that I think storytellers have been using forever to really draw people in. It's something that hooks you, that makes it so that you can't get away, that you wanna come back and watch more and more. And it's so simple and it's so easy. All I have to do is right at the very end of the video, just add a, a cliffhanger. Something that is an emotional high point, usually supposed to be the climax of the story, or at least that's what we think, until the rug gets pulled out from under us. There are cliffhangers in life, you know. Have you ever gotten the, uh, we need to talk text? You're expecting an immediate resolution, begging for it even, but it doesn't come. You have to wait until the next go around, the next conversation, the next episode. It's painful, but it's something that keeps us coming back. It's something that keeps us watching, keeps our attention and keeps us focused. Why? Well, if you take any freshman psych class or interpersonal comms course, you'll understand it's because human beings hate uncertainty. But when uncertainty is put within a certain framework, it can become addicting. Take sports, for example. We don't know who's gonna win or how they're gonna do it, but we understand that the rules are clearly defined and the outcome, even though uncertain, is fun to watch. There's a concept in film that plays on this need or this love of constrained uncertainty. It's actually called Chekhov's Gun. Chekhov's Gun states that if a gun is shown in film, that at some point during the film, that gun must go off. Now, why? It's because the human mind has this need for climax. It has this need for resolution. It needs to see that gun go off to feel put at ease. But is that really what a cliffhanger is? No, of course not. The cliffhanger is so much more than Chekhov's gun. It defies the need for that resolution. It takes the climax and postpones it to a different time, creating this desire to see more. You see, a truly great cliffhanger takes something like Chekhov's gun, fills it with emotion, racks it, and then just when you think that gun is primed to go off, nothing. That's the beauty of a cliffhanger. If the climax is the target or the goal, the cliffhanger can push it further away. Have you ever heard the expression, hindsight is 2020? This refers to the thought that everything that we see in our rear view is actually clearer than what we see in front of us. It explores the idea that maybe we're so focused on getting where we're going that we're missing things along the way. We're not really soaking up the journey and therefore we can't really form a complete picture of the world around us. That's what I think about cliffhangers. I think that they kind of help us get a little bit of that 2020 back before everything is in the rear view. It gives us just a little bit of time to stop and enjoy the journey before we really get to where we're going. Thank you. You got it. Appreciate it. Okay, so why would you want to push off the climax? Thank you. Why would you want to include something like a cliffhanger? Why wouldn't you just want to get to the point? Well, in a world full of instant gratification, I think it's really important to savor the journey. If you treat a cliffhanger kind of like we do gas stations, you get to stop and you get to take a moment to kind of soak everything in. And on the trips that are the longest, you know, sure, that stop's gonna add a half an hour to your drive, but when you finally get there, it's so much more rewarding, right? Oh, and uh, speaking of climax, I almost forgot. Chekhov's gun, right? Wrong.
When I was exploring a lot of the concepts for this set of videos this week, I really kind of realized just how wrong my thoughts towards storytelling were, especially when it came to the climax. I always thought that the climax had to be this big, grandiose thing that looked like it was a multi-million dollar production and that, in turn, it would make your film that much better, but that just isn't the case. I think the truth is that the climax is supposed to be the point in the story that makes you feel the most, not necessarily the point in the story that's doing the most. I think I get kind of lost in this Marvel-esque philosophy of trying to create the biggest, most intense moment, when in reality that's not my job. My job is to make you feel something. And especially when I've been exploring this kind of daily vlog series, letting you into my life, what do I want you to feel? It's a question that I'm really struggling to answer. I guess if I were gonna boil it down to one word, it would be sincerity. I want you to feel my heart through the screen. I want you to feel that I'm sincerely trying to improve as a filmmaker, that I'm sincerely trying to entertain you. I know that I'm not the best YouTuber out there. In fact, I'm not really even a YouTuber at all. I just started two days ago. But I think my aim is to improve and to create something that really entertains you. Not because I wanna be famous and blow up on YouTube, but because it's what I'm passionate about. It's what I love doing. Telling stories has always been a big part of my life and I don't wanna give up on that yet. I wanna make something that lasts, and I think that's part of my draw to this series and to vlogging and to really trying to let you in. I did wanna come on here and say this. The more emotionally intense the climax is, the more rewarding the falling action will be. So if you have this great connection between the characters on screen and the people watching, when they finally get that resolution, when they finally get that happy or sad ending, it's gonna resonate even more with the viewer. Okay, I really wanna get a shot on this balcony thing behind me, um, but I'm not really sure how to get in there. I tried to go in the building, but it's locked. Um, so I'm just gonna hop it. Sometimes you gotta risk, risk it for the biscuit, you know? Risk it for the shot that you want. Made it over, hopefully I don't get in too much trouble. <laughs> okay, I know I said I wasn't gonna do a lot of talking head stuff at my desk, this is gonna be quick. I just wanna let you know that there were some unforeseen circumstances tonight that had me cut the shoot short, so I didn't get everything that I wanted. <laughs> Falling action is what gives stories their character. So it makes a comedy a comedy, a tragedy a tragedy, and so on. It's the last few minutes of the ride. It's the quintessential bow on the present. It ties up all the loose ends and brings us back down to Earth. The falling action also helps us understand the impact of the choices made throughout the story. It lets us know whether the outcome is going to be positive or negative, and it can really change the way that we view the entire story. Just like a haircut. The falling action usually comes in two distinct flavors, each one with its own qualities and characteristics. The first we'll call the semi-resolve falling action, or the James Bond. This is where the hero rides off into the sunset, leaving questions of what's going to happen next, headed to their next adventure. Even though the current conflict has been resolved, it still insinuates that there's more to come. There's something else. The second is the full resolution, or the fairy tale ending. This one leaves no questions about what happens next to the characters. It gives the viewer everything that they need to fill in the gaps and the details. It even lets the viewer know how the choices that that character made are going to play out, whether positive or negative. Think of the ending of a Hallmark rom-com or a movie like Shutter Island where everything is wrapped up nice and neatly. I think that's the beautiful thing about how we live our lives is that it's never just one or the other. It's never just always the next adventure or the fairy tale ending. It's always a combination of both. 
Each day is like a mini movie of its own. We get to get up and live this extraordinary life. And whether for good or for bad, it's always a summation of the choices that we make. The friends that we have along the way and the times that we spend together. Sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry together. <laughs> you guys have... Y'all just have... Everybody here has been such a good friend to me. And I know, Chris says couldn't make it because they're all sick. Um, but honestly, you guys mean the world to me. You guys are like family, and I appreciate being able to spend my birthday with people like family, <laughs> and I appreciate you guys taking the time to come and uh, really just celebrate this day. I love hanging out with you guys. I love everything about each and every one of you guys. Um, other than Jason, I guess he didn't, he didn't care. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about our lives and about each type of falling action is that no matter what, they always lead to an end.